accumulation approach. Essentially what I'm going to be arguing is that a complex of institutions which support the process of capital accumulation, that is a social structure of accumulation, is responsible for long periods of relatively unproblematic capital accumulation and the breakdown of these social structures of accumulation is responsible for periods of crisis. Uh, these institutions essentially come in three flavors. These are not just economic institutions, but political and cultural, ideological institutions as well. Uh, capitalist history divvied up in this sense is a history of stages of capitalism. That is, the social structure of accumulation analysis uh, arises actually out of the first crisis of Marxism, which was in fact the debate between Bernstein, uh, Kautsky, and then later Lenin. Uh, the, uh, the solution to that debate, which was neither revisionist nor uh, irretrievably dogmatic uh, was the promulgation of a concept of the stage of capitalism a la Lenin's uh, imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism. Uh, capitalist history from the mid-19th century is characterized by first a competitive social structure of accumulation which goes into crisis in the late 19th century, the first Great Depression. Uh, as it was called at the time. They didn't know it was just the first, but uh, it was, from our perspective, uh, the first Great Depression. The 1930s, uh, which is the crisis of the resolution of that late 19th century crisis, which was monopoly capitalism, Lenin's imperialism. Uh, the 1930s crisis was resolved with the construction of the post-war social structure of accumulation, Fordism in, in some descriptions. Uh, Fordism goes into crisis in the mid-1970s, the stagflationary crisis, and emerges again uh, with the global neoliberal era, which is what we've been living through uh, since the early 1980s. Uh, that global neoliberal era is still with us, but it appears that we are now definitively in the disintegration phase of the social structure of accumulation. I do want to make a distinction here between the transition from the post-war era uh, to the global neoliberal era, uh, specifically in relation to the way in which the local society, the lo local social formation, is integrated into the international. And in fact, that's precisely the distinction I want to make, that there was always an international dimension to capitalism. This is obviously not controversial. This is uh, first principles, really. Uh, but that in the post-war period, what we had was nationally specific social structures of accumulation, which shared among them a common international order. Um, but the, in the global neoliberal era, uh, this particular relationship was transformed and we moved from international to transnational relationships. There's a transnational global neoliberal order within which specific countries uh, and their social systems are nested. So I want to examine global neoliberalism in a little more detail. Global neoliberalism being, if nothing else, multifaceted, so I'm going to run through this quite quickly so as to be able to get to the crisis of global neoliberalism and then the crisis of uh, the Irish version of global neoliberalism. I'll come back to this. Um, this is not to simplify global neoliberalism down into just four elements. Uh, this is just to put 
four umbrellas over uh, a much more diverse list. Uh, globalization, neoliberalism, financialization, uh, and perhaps I should say the attack on labor rather than weak labor, but that's been the result. Uh, globalization, globalization uh, has a number of aspects. Uh, if we go to Marx's circuit of capital, we can talk about the globalization of money. Uh, we see that in the 1990s, there was a break, a qualitative change uh, in that globalization. The globalization of trade, that is the globalization of commodity capital, uh, we can find breaks here uh, in the late 1970s, early 1980s. Uh, the globalization of production is fundamentally uh, the major change. Uh, that is, the ability of capital to distribute production across national borders uh, and to locate each part of the accumulation process in that location which is most favorable uh, to profitability. These production operations are then reintegrated through trade and more specifically through commodity chains which can take place external to the corporation uh, or uh, could be organized internal to the corporation through its internal logistics. We have the integration of a large area of the previously second world, which we heard about this morning, uh, into the international capitalist system, and the emergence uh, I would argue, though this is controversial, of a transnational capitalist class for the first time. Uh, while uh, we, for a long time as Marxists have been talking about the transnational working class and the transnational capitalist class, in fact we maintained a conception of the British bourgeoisie or the American capitalist class or the French working class we had no trouble putting a national designation on these classes. I think with the 1980s, with the emergence of global neoliberalism, these designations are definitively anachronistic. Uh, neoliberalism, which we talked about earlier, I won't go into in any detail, an essential piece here, uh, just to observe that neoliberalism is on the one hand a theory, on the other hand a policy, and on the third hand, a set of institutions. So neoclassical economics is the science of neoliberalism. Uh, privatization is one of its policies, and the World Trade Organization uh, exists as a neoliberal institution. Um, domestically, we're looking at hollowed out government, deregulation, the prioritizing of stability, that is uh, fighting inflation over fighting unemployment, privatization, lower taxes for capital, uh, the emergence of uh, <laughs> neoliberal ideology. I love this cartoon. Um, I especially like the, uh, the little drop of sweat there. Um, and you can uh, sort of imagine Ireland into that cartoon, if you like. Uh, again, neoclassical economics. Financialization. Uh, extremely important here, though very difficult to understand. Uh, the routing of more and more of the surplus produced in the economy through uh, financial institutions uh, to the owners of financial investments and financial instruments. Karen talked about this uh, already. Uh, weakened labor, we don't need to talk about that too much. Um, but just to talk about the uh, advent of the threat of movement uh, and the profound difference that made between uh, the, in the power relations of transnational capital uh, and local workforces. Uh, the threat of movement became the dominant form of labor control in this period. Uh, whereas other labor control strategies have been dominant in other periods. Uh, there's the USA statistic uh, uh, to sort of sit alongside Karen's Irish set of statistics. We have the emergence of increasing inequality, 
I don't have time to go into the details of this. This just asserts that um, there's been uh, a break and an increase in inequality in countries at all levels uh, of GDP per head. Um, this doesn't look identical uh, top to bottom, but the break is there uh, in all instances. The emergence of lean production strategies, uh, which if you're uh, employed in making things, um, you've definitely seen elements of, uh, I think in the next period, if you're employed anywhere, you'll see more and more of this rhetoric around lean production. Uh, it's a, basically a recipe for management by stress and the production of repetitive strain injury at the end of the day. Um, what I'm going to argue is that the Celtic Tiger is a manifestation of uh, the global neoliberal order, but uh, a manifestation with its own particular uh, local and national characteristics. Ireland and globalization, Ireland's entry into, the glo into globalization uh, is almost symbolized by uh, the low corporation tax and the uh, death grip uh, which the establishment has on maintaining this low corporation tax. Uh, the implication is uh, that Ireland wants to be a player in foreign direct investment. Uh, the IDA uh, trying to draw multinational capital in, or should I say transnational capital. Enterprise Ireland attempting to take Irish enterprises and project them onto a world stage. Uh, say just in passing that uh, local business is not really a counter in the long run to uh, transnationalization, successful local business. Uh, multinationalizes fairly quickly. Uh, Ireland's entry into the European Union, although it predates the global neoliberal era, is very important here. Um, some statistics on um, the level of foreign direct investment uh, rising rapidly uh, after uh, 1997 or so. Uh, Ireland's export volumes. Uh, Ireland, in addition to participating in globalization, was an enthusiastic participation, participant in neoliberalism, or should I say global neoliberalism. Uh, probably the most famous quotation in Ireland during this period. Oh my God, five minutes. Uh, uh, Irish deregulation, there's a list of Irish privatizations. Um, the location of Ireland as a low tax regime, a fundamentally neoliberal strategy. Uh, Irish financialization was both global and local. Uh, there's the Financial Services Center. Uh, tremendous problems as a consequence of this, um, feeding into the housing bubble. Uh, Ireland also participating as uh, Kieran's statistics showed in a weakening of the labor movement, but that weakening took the peculiar form in Ireland of the social partnership regime. Uh, more specifically, a trading of tax cuts uh, for uh, wage moderation. The crisis of global neoliberalism, uh, Kieran already talked about many of the elements of this. Uh, the trick here is to get from global neoliberalism uh, to, uh, it's very unclear what this will ultimately be called. Uh, for the moment, um, we've uh, consolidated a little bit around Great Recession, but that may change. Uh, the Great Recession consisting of both a financial crisis in a demand crisis, I should probably redo this to talk about an unemployment crisis, not a demand crisis. Uh, so the trick is to get from the global neoliberal order to the crisis of the global neoliberal order. Uh, the crisis has its origins in exactly the same set of institutions which restored profitability. 
uh, in the 1980s. Uh, a little bit of statistics there, not entirely inconsistent with Karen's graph. But restored profitability uh, was also concomitant with stagnant wages and the emergence as a consequence of globalization of excess capacity, or you could call it overaccumulation. Um, there's the same stats actually that uh, Kieran had about the relationship between productivity and wages. Uh, stagnant wages and excess capacity led to sluggish investment. But sluggish investment coupled with restored profitability and financialization created the conditions for asset bubbles and as Kieran pointed out, the asset bubbles to some extent compensated for the stagnation of wages because inflation of house values allowed people to borrow themselves into debt. Uh, there's your dot-com bubble, the American housing bubble. The collapse of the asset bubbles led to financial crisis and the financial crisis set the stage for uh, the ultimate payment for a period of stag and wages and sluggish investment, and the collapse of demand and employment. <coughs> the Irish crisis, a version of the neoliberal crisis. Uh, I've already talked about global neoliberalism Irish style. The consequence of global neoliberalism Irish style was the Celtic tiger, but uh, this is going to be the same set of institutions which eventually lead to the Irish crisis. Uh, weakened labor has different consequences in <coughs> Ireland than it does in some of the rest of the capitalist world. Uh, rising levels of inequality and the social partnership deal. Uh, there's a little illustration, we can come back to that if you want, of rising inequalities, social partnership. Uh, financialization in the Celtic Tiger, however, contributed ultimately to our own asset bubble uh, in the various property markets. Uh, the ho Irish housing bubble there is the blue line. Um, the asset bubble uh, linked with neoliberal ideology, uh, the globalization of competition, and the peculiar character of the social partnership agreements led to a low tax regime. Uh, there's Ireland compared to other OECD countries. Uh, the asset bubble and rising inequality led to high levels of debt, uh, both corporate and consumer. Uh, Irish borrowing, percentage of disposable income. And then finally, the collapse of that asset bubble led to uh, the financial crisis, which started earlier here than it did uh, in the general economy, or in the world economy. Um, but the emergence of the international crisis uh, started the ball rolling quickly downhill. Uh, credit collapses. Uh, the financial crisis, coupled with the low tax regime, uh, sets off the fiscal crisis, the explosion of Irish deficits. Uh, the fiscal crisis, high levels of debt, uh, the financial crisis and the international crisis uh, lead to the Irish unemployment crisis uh, and the transformation uh, of the Celtic Tiger uh, into uh, one of the pigs. Uh, it's, it's one of the eyes there. Sometimes it sits by itself. Sometimes it's uh, partnered with Italy. Uh, the the point here, uh, or the point of the analysis, and, and I'll finish with this, uh, well, I'll finish with one more slide, but the, the, the point of the analysis is to answer the question, what is this a crisis of? Okay, the standard 
uh, both economic and journalistic analysis is that, that this is a crisis of finance. Um, if we fix finance, things will be all right. Now, some people think fixing finance is easy, and other people think fixing finance is uh, going to be difficult. But if we fix finance one way or another, the problem will be solved. This is not just a crisis of finance. Okay. What is it a crisis of? Is it a crisis of capitalism? And the answer to that is we don't know yet. It might be. It'd be real interesting if it was. Um, but we don't know that yet. But what we do know, I think, at this point, is that this is a crisis of the latest stage of capitalism inaugurating a period of economic crisis analogous to the stagflationary crisis of the 70s, the Great Depression of the 1930s, and the first Great Depression of the late 19th century, which was, in fact, seen by contemporary Marxists is the final crisis of capitalism. Uh, the monopoly capitalist recovery was the unexpected uh, stimulus for the uh, analysis uh, of, or the stage theoretic analysis of capitalist history. Uh, this is some US statistics. Um, essentially, the Irish government strategy is rescue the banks, balance the budget, and jam tomorrow. Where does the jam come from? It's supposed to come from capitalist world recovery. Um, these are all the United States depressions after the Second World War from their beginning until uh, employment is restored. This is the current recession. It's nothing like anything that's happened since the Second World War, and there's no prospect that American recovery is going to get us out of this. Thanks.